So the next operator that we're going to look at is the create, or sorry, the interval and timer operators. These, uh, these are also two that I think you would get a lot of use out of. So I want to talk about a pretty common problem in Android development that, or a pretty common thing that, um, that uh, we as Android developers often encounter and how we solve that problem. So suppose you want to, uh, you know, do some kind of process for X amount of time and then stop that process, or you want to keep track of the time that something is happening, basically. A very common way to deal with this is using a runnable and a handler. So you'd have something like this. You'd have, you know, your handler, your runnable, an integer tracking the total elapsed time. And once that elapsed time has uh, passed, you would remove the callbacks and kind of just stop the whole process. So, um, so you have the handler posting a delay every one second or 1,000 milliseconds, and then incrementing your counter as that happens. So this is a pretty common thing that, uh, that happens, a pretty uh, common problem that we, that we solve, and this is how we solve it. So with RxJava, what, there's, a, there's an alternative to doing this, and that's going to be using the interval operator. So this is kind of how you would use it. Uh, I'm just going to copy this because I don't want to type it out because I don't know if that necessarily adds any value. So it emits an observable of long type. I'm going to call it interval observable. Once again, I'm referencing static methods inside the observable class. It's called interval. I'm specifying how long the interval, how long each interval is. So in this case, it's one second. So what this is going to do, uh, just kind of ignore this for now. I'm going to comment that out. If that wasn't there, what this would do is it would just emit an object every one second. It would emit a long object every one second. Um, so you could uh, you could change this too. You know, it could be milliseconds, it could be hours, it could be days, it could be months, it could be whatever you want. Obviously, days and months probably isn't a good idea, but uh, in the realm of seconds and milliseconds, this is a good, very useful thing to do. So if the period is two, it would emit one every two seconds. If it's one, it would be one every uh, one second. So now, how do you stop this thing? Because it would theoretically run forever infinitely until uh, I guess your activity was destroyed and your disposables were taken care of. Uh, so you can use another operator it's called the take while operator. I know I talked about this in the previous video, uh, but uh, not not really in very much detail. I actually have a, a whole lecture on the take while operator, I believe. Yeah, take and take while. So we're going to be coming to that eventually. But for now, uh, just kind of look at how I'm using it here. So I can call take while I'm specifying a new predicate. And I want to continue taking these observables or emitting these observables until the long value is, uh, or while the, the long value is less than or equal to five. So that's how you kind of limit how many objects are going to be emitted by this interval operator. It's going to emit a long object every one second until that long object becomes equal to or greater than five, basically. So let's, let's subscribe to this. So interval observer dot subscribe, uh, new observer. And now I want to print this to the log. So I'm just going to print this uh, long object to the log. Uh, and I need to add a semicolon down here. And of course, everything inside this method is going to be done on a background thread. So I could do uh, thread, thread dot current thread dot get name just to show you. Uh, I can also print the uh, the long value here too. So I'm going to print at long and do a comma thread and then print the thread. So let's uh, let's run that and take a look. So uh, obviously, if it's being done on a background thread, this would be a great place to do some kind of work, execute some kind of method that would that should be done on a background thread. So there they're starting to emit. You have zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six is where it ends. So you can see you get that log output right here. That's this printing to the log. But this condition is no longer satisfied because now our long is on six. Uh, so it quits at that point and, uh, and everything stops. So that's, uh, that's the interval operator. Definitely a, a, a very useful operator. I'm sure you'll find a lot of use with that. Now let's come down and look at the next one. So next we have the timer operator. This one is sort of similar because uh, because it's related to time, obviously. But this one's a little different because instead of emitting an observable every time interval, it emits a single observable after the time you specified has elapsed. So I'm going to copy this, go back to Android Studio, going to paste over our previous observable. Uh, this is called time observable now. And so inside here, I have a timer 
that is specifying a single second. So after one second, it's going to emit a single observable. If I change this to three seconds, it would be after three seconds, it would emit a single observable. So let's, uh, let's run that and just take a look and see what happens here. So there's the app starting and you can see there's no log output and there's that log output right there emitting the observable after three seconds has elapsed. So that's, uh, that's going to be it for this video. Pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but I think these two operators are very useful. You'll, you'll likely find lots of use cases for these. And in the next one, we're going to look at from array, from iterable, and from callable.